Hey everyone, this is Greg with AI Light Show. In this video, we will be discussing the different audio conditioning blocks available via the Force 1.0. So what we're looking at here is the run mode screen. Now, every time you power cycle the Force 1.0 and access run mode for the first time, the default configuration settings will get loaded. In this case, you can see in yellow text, we have our boost and compression block on, which provides 40 dB of gain plus 20 dB of compression, automatic compression essentially implementing a subtle automatic gain control feature. In addition, we have our base in and peak detection audio conditioning block selected. Now there are four audio conditioning blocks which you can select, and really the end goal is to ensure that you have a nice displayed audio waveform on the screen, which you can adjust the gain and the trigger level such that you can extract the strong percussive elements of your music. Now, every time you get a strong transient pulse from, say, a kick drum or something, you want to make sure that the waveform exceeds this trigger level, generating a trigger. Now, triggers are indicated by the color of the waveform turning red when it exceeds this adjustable trigger level, as well as a flash of the sync button indicating a trigger has occurred. So you're getting dual representations of a trigger in this case. And really selecting the audio conditioning block is completely based on your preference and the type of music you're playing. We have different blocks for different types of music. Now you access the different audio conditioning blocks via the max shift operators. operators. So to access that, you hold down the max button and you will immediately be displayed a button assignment key on the touch screen here. Now each, each one of these buttons on the screen indicates which capacitive touch sensor buttons make which selection. Now, if you notice right here, it says AGC on. That stands for automatic gain control on. And on the touch screen, we noted that via the boost and compression text you saw in yellow. So we can turn that on or off simply by tapping this button. You notice right now AGC is off, so I lose that 40 dB of gain and the automatic gain control feature. And the audio conditioning block we selected is the base plus peak detection audio signal block right here, denoted by that button. I can select just a bass and filter, which is essentially a bandpass filter, send and pass filter, send it at 100 hertz. I can select the same one that was loaded, loaded by default, our bass plus peak detection block. I can select a raw audio, in, essentially a unprocessed copy of the input signal coming in via the line in port on the back of the unit. Or I can select the raw audio inputs, audio input signal which is also piped through that novel pulse detection slash peak detection audio conditioning block. So what you have here is you have four audio conditioning blocks you can select based on the type of music you are playing, whichever one provides a way of extracting the strong percussive elements of the music, as well as an independent automatic gain control block that you can turn on or off at will. All right, so let's get back to our default settings here. I will play some music, go through these different modes and adjust things at an adequate level to provide a detection of the BPM of the music being played to give you an idea of how these different blocks and the AGC impacts the actual quality of the audio waveform. We have here is a pretty well established audio signal with our trigger levels. You can see we're extracting the percussive elements of the music quite well, generating triggers being denoted by the red portion of the audio waveform and the blue syncing sync button, blue flashing sync button, excuse me. Now what we can do here is we can turn off the automatic gain control feature and you'll notice that the audio signal drops way down because we lose that 40 dB of gain and the 20 dB of automatic gain control. So what I can do is I can compensate by cranking the gain up until we reestablish a good, solid extraction of the percussive elements of the music. Now what I'll do is I'll just enable the bass in audio conditioning block, and you can see we see more elements of the audio waveform in this case. Still, we're extracting the percussive elements quite well. I'll go into just the audio input, so the raw, unconditioned audio input signal. And you can see we have quite a bit of detail displayed on the screen here. Now for a song like this, I probably would not select an audio conditioning block like this, but you can still get pretty good results. Now I can pipe this through that same pulse detection audio conditioning block that we had before, and you can see it does a pretty good job. We're still extracting pulses quite well, and we can sync with the music very accurately with pretty much any mode here. So it's really up to you 
which block you select based on the strength of the incoming audio signal.